Now, Religion in the News, a report and comment on religious trends and events being covered by the media. This week's item is from worldpoliticsreview.com, January 8, 2008, with the headline, Hamas and Islamic Millenarianism, What the West Doesn't Recognize. The following are excerpts. Some 20 years after its founding, the Palestinian organization Hamas remains little understood in the West. The most common error made by observers in considering contemporary Islamist movements, and notably Hamas, is that of attempting to grasp them in terms of concepts and modes of thought that are proper to the West. Most Western analysis of the phenomenon of Islamism tend to underestimate or even obscure a fundamental element that is common to all the various Islamist currents and organizations namely the role of specifically Muslim religious beliefs, and more precisely, of Islamic eschatology. It is impossible to understand the success enjoyed by Hamas, notably since the Palestinian elections nearly two years ago, and the persistence of Islamism in general, if one fails to take into account the beliefs held by the members of Islamist movements. What are the goals of Hamas? The preamble of the Hamas Charter clearly affirms the centrality of the struggle against the Jews, which is supposed to be carried on until the enemies are vanquished and Allah's victory is realized. The role of eschatological or millenarian beliefs within Islam cuts across all the divisions within the Muslim world, between Sunnism and Shiism, between traditional Islam and contemporary Islamism. As the French historian Pierre Laurie explained, the imminence of the end of time and of the final judgment is one of the oldest and most constant Quranic themes and is found throughout the sacred text of Islam. Inasmuch as Muhammad is the last prophet bearing the seal of prophecy, his advent inaugurates the last period of universal history that is, the eschatological period. Hamas is a radical Islamic movement whose worldview is marked by an Islamic eschatology in which the Jews occupy a central place. Its apocalyptic vision of a final confrontation with Israel excludes every possibility of coexistence or moderation. The hatred of Jews expressed in the Hamas Charter and conveyed in the discourse of its officials is not simply a religious anti-Judaism or an imported anti-Semitism of European origins. It is, as the French scholar of anti-Semitism Pierre-André Taguieff has put it, a millenarian and redemptive anti-Semitism. In other words, the Muslim world can only be saved by the extermination of the Jews. Dave, uh, this is rather lengthy, but very important because uh, one of the reasons I selected this is that it really supports what you've been saying for years, what you wrote about in Judgment Day. And people, uh, certainly the press, you find little bits and pieces. They're, they're starting to get it, but not quite yet. And I think... Uh, this individual, who is French, by the way, this is a French translation, and these are just excerpts from a longer article, but uh, he's saying it the way it is. This is it. Tom, let me quote Muhammad, uh, and I, I quote him, of course, this is from the Sahih Bukhari Hadith. I quote him in um, Judgment Day, and we've said it on the program a time or two, but not in a while, so let's get it clear. Again, Muhammad said, the last day. Now, he's not saying the last days. That's what Christians believe in. That's what the Bible talks about. The last day is one of the five pillars of Islam that every Muslim must believe. What is the last day? That's when Muslims are raised from the dead to see whether their good deeds outweigh their bad. Okay? Mm -hmm. So now, understand, no Muslim can be resurrected to face this final test until what happens? The last day shall not come until the Muslims confront the Jews and the Muslims destroy them. In that day, 
Allah will give a voice to the rocks and the trees, and the rocks and the trees will cry out, Muslim, O Abdullah, O servant of Allah, there is a Jew hiding behind me. Come and kill him. So that was the last statement by this man is very accurate. He says, in other words, the Muslim world can only be saved by the extermination of the Jews. I'm glad he said that. You don't hear people saying that. No. I think I was one of the only ones, or very few, saying that. You can't understand what is going on in the Middle East unless you understand that until Islam controls, until they wiped out Israel, they must wipe out Israel, but they must wipe out all Jews all over the world. Until you understand that, you don't understand what's really happening yeah. over there. And Dave, it's really interesting because the uh, secular press, it's not just that they're oblivious to it, but they're looking for other reasons. They're always trying to find out why. And they say, well, it's an economic struggle and mm -hmm. so on. But many of the terrorists, uh, the martyrs, so-called, right, right. have come from middle-class families and so on. This some is them, really— Some of them from wealthy families. Yes. So this is not just ideological. This is a religious belief that's at the core of what we're seeing, and it's not going to go away until this, uh, this is changed. Now, let's just take it one step further. Muhammad also said, Allah has commanded me to fight against all people until all people confess there is no God but Allah, and Muhammad is his prophet. Mm -hmm. or his messenger. Now, if you want to talk about eschatology, there it is. It can't, the consummation will be when Islam not only wipes out all Jews, but has conquered the world. This is what they must do. Now, if you're going to fit that into some peace plan, you know, President Bush's roadmap to peace and how they can naively continue with this pursuit. Well, of course, because as we pointed out in the past, uh, Condoleezza Rice is, she believes, in replacement theology. Mm -hmm. So Israel is finished. They have no place in God's plan. And that's a lie. And that is exactly what Islam wants to bring to pass. One point the writer of the article makes is that Muhammad's last words were, uh, we're going to take Constantinople and then we're going to take Rome. Now, I'm paraphrasing that because I don't have it in front of me. But certainly, they took Constantinople, Istanbul now. But Rome was also on Muhammad's mind. Mm -hmm. uh, his last words were, May Allah curse the Christians and the Jews. And the Quran, of course, says, do not make any friendship with a Christian or a Jew. For more information about the Berean call, call us toll free at our order number or visit our website.